Howdy folks, I'm Brian. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit. Our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for blocking my sister because she kept sending me pictures of her new cat? My sister is a 26 year old female and she just adopted a cat over a month ago and she's been sending me, a 28 year old male, pics nonstop of every single second of his life. I am not exaggerating. Five pics of the same shot of the cat sleeping or climbing on her bookshelf, some blurry ones of the cat in motion. My phone was going off several times every hour. The first few pics were cute and all, but it got tiring after a while. I have to take important work calls, reply to emails, and text constantly so my phone is never on silent. So anytime she was messaging me, my phone would go off. I replied sometimes with an emoji or something, but not all the time, and I did ask her once if she could not text me so many times because it distracts me from work. She stopped for like a week until it started again. She got him all these new toys, so it was constant videos of him playing with them. I blocked her in the end, and it lasted days because I completely forgot that I had blocked her. My sister got mad at me the other day because her car died on her a couple of miles from my house, and she was calling me for a ride. I actually stepped out of my place to grab some lunch, so by the time I got home, she was waiting for me at the door. Since I wasn't answering, she made the long walk to my house because she didn't have any money to take an Uber back home. She was even more angry after I told her why I wasn't replying to her anymore and now has been giving me the silent treatment. My mom had asked why my sister seems upset with me after I explained she thinks I was wrong. Even if she was sending excessive messages, it was over something that's been making her happy that she wants to share and it wasn't good to just block her like I did. I fail to see how I'm the jerk, but that's why I'm asking. Just curious to know what others think of the situation. All right, OP. I think that you were probably a little excessive here with blocking your sister. I understand, like, your frustration with the situation. I, I really do. I think that you have legitimate reasons to be frustrated and I think you have legitimate reasons to, you know, want her to not message you so often. But I think blocking her was a little bit extreme here. I think what you should have done here is establish boundaries and said, say something to the effect of, look, you can text me and message me all you want, but don't do it during work hours. And you know, just reinforce that because it seems like she was fine for a little while and then she started messaging you again. And instead of just kindly reminding her and saying, we talked about this before, could you please limit these texts during the daytime? You just went ahead and blocked her immediately, it sounds like, without confronting her again. So that's where I think that you might have been wrong in this situation. I can certainly understand your frustration. I can certainly understand why you would not want to be distracted during the workday. And, you know, this in some ways is a lot like the boy who cried wolf from your sister's end, where, you know, she constantly was, you know, sending you messages. And eventually it got to the point where it was all just noise to you. And you just were like, well, I, I don't need to hear any of this, which I think is unfortunate. I really do. But Again, I think the way you handled the situation was a little inappropriate. Anyhow, take care and good luck. You're the jerk. You could have just muted her so they still came through but didn't alert. She was excited about something and you were rude. And OP replies, it would still show up on my notifications, wouldn't it? Or how does that work? The whole point is it's distracting and I wanted it to be so that I don't get constant messages at all. Why didn't you just hide the alerts from her messages? Then you could have gotten called, but no more spam texts. I'm going with not the jerk because I also use my phone for work and know exactly how disruptive this kind of behavior can be. If you can, change her ringtone to silent in her contact entry in your phone and that you could solve your problems generally without having to block her. All right, our next letter is titled 
Am I a jerk for telling my dad it's time to be a big boy and talk to my mom and sister himself? My sister is getting married this year and has chosen me and her mom to be with her for wedding stuff. Has not let our stepmother of 16 years in because we both have issues with her and instead of going to the actual bride or mom who they blame, my dad came complaining about it to me saying I need to help them fix this so she's not totally crushed by being left out. I told him I was not going to get in the middle of it and it was time to be a big boy and go to the people he actually has an issue with, i.e. my mom and sister. He told me he was my father and deserved more respect. I pointed out that he was talking to the wrong person, me, and I didn't want to go to bat for someone I'm not close to either, so this isn't the way to go. I told him that he's a grown man, and he has raised two grown children, and he's been married twice, so he needs to be able to talk to people he has a beef with. He takes issues with me being rude, and now I'm wondering if I messed up with how I responded to him. Am I a jerk? All right, OP. <laughs> you know, maybe you could have been a little kinder in this situation, but you're not wrong here, and that's just what it boils down to. You... It sounds like this isn't the first time he's come to you with problems, and that's probably a little bit of a frustration for you. And you don't want to be the person in the middle of this situation. And he, you feel like he's approaching the wrong person. And I think that's actually very fair. This isn't your place. You don't need to go to bat for your stepmom, um, who you actually have a problem with. And you, you know, you know, it's kind of like going to a job, asking a job reference from someone who you're not on good terms with. You kindly tell them, you know, I would not be the best person to give you a job reference. <laughs> and that's kind of what's going on here. Um, you're not the best person to go to bat for this individual because you're not on good terms with them. So it also sounds like he's being, you know, overly protective of your stepmom. And it sounds like your stepmom wants to be involved in the wedding planning part of this. And your stepsister doesn't necessarily want that. If she had wanted that, then she would have invited her. But this isn't what she wants. And he just needs to kind of accept that. So, yeah, I think that's kind of where I stand on this one. I did read the comments from OP, but it doesn't look like there's any additional information here. So, yeah, it just sounds like that they don't really care for uh, the stepmom. Not the jerk. You're right. He is talking to the entirely wrong person. You pointing this out is not disrespectful. He's just mad that he hasn't been able to get you on his side. For a man that talks of respect or lack thereof, he clearly doesn't practice what he preaches. The bride has said that she doesn't want her stepmom to be a part of her wedding stuff. They should respect her decision. It's incredibly disrespectful of him to go behind her back and ask you to attempt to convince her to change her mind. Stand your ground. Not the jerk. He's not upset that you were rude. He's upset because you told him no. Exactly, which is why he sees it as rude, because his understanding of respect is obedience. It does seem th it does seem that he has a little bit of that thread, where sometimes when people say, I expect you to respect me, they mean I'll treat you like a person as long as you treat me like an authority. And it does seem like the, st uh, the father has kind of that attitude here. All right, our next letter is titled... Am I a jerk for telling my in-laws that I'll never cook for them because I don't cook for ungrateful people? My in-laws are big food people. They also are the kind of people who complain about food they get behind the cook's back. I always knew this about my in-laws. My husband warned me, told me that he had told them to knock it off, but they won't. So he refuses to engage. They are that ungrateful that when my grandmother-in-law died, his family were all complaining about the food a neighbor brought them, casseroles, salad, sandwiches, pizza, and saying how bland or meh the food was. The food was tasty, and there wasn't a thing wrong with it, but that's just them. They never talk like that about each other's food, but as an in-law, 
you're not exactly exempt from criticism. Another time that they were at a neighbor's barbecue and they complained about the stuff that other people brought, even saying something about the food a 12 year old had prepared. They had made little skewers saying it was so obviously a child's cooking, meaning nothing special as they put it. Rude. So anyway, my sister-in-law had her youngest christening recently. She had hired a caterer and they canceled at the last minute. Worker came down with COVID. They ended up asking me if I would help get food together for it. I said no. My husband told them that we were busy and we didn't have time for it. Sister-in-law said I usually have a chill Sunday and could easily prepare something. He spoke to them and said, in no uncertain terms, did I owe them food. What followed was that they stopped by while he was working and I was home and they asked me to make a couple of pizzas for the christening party. I told them that they already had their answer. They told me I could get them some money. They told me I could get some money thrown my way for it. I told them that even if they paid me double the standard price of two pizzas, I still wouldn't cook for them with how they treat food made by other people. They told me that being part of the family means having to sometimes, and I said I would never cook for them because I don't cook for ungrateful people. They're mad, and a few of them called me a jerk. My husband told me that they were acting like kids, and I was fine. Part of me feels like a jerk because I know how they are, and I engaged with them. Am I a jerk? All right, OP, I can certainly understand your point of view in this situation. And I can understand that you do not want to feel on the business end of the criticism here. You aren't obligated to cook for them. You know, the thing is that they had a caterer and the caterer fell through. Why are they coming to you to cook for them? You know, I think that this is a little bit in poor taste on their part. And another thing is they will just want pizzas, right? So if they just want pizzas, order a pizza. You know, that way they can just complain to their heart's content about how awful the pizza is. Um, (laughs) And then you don't even have to be subjected to that. Also, kind of their whole, well, you have a chill Sunday, so you could do this. Well, maybe you do have a time off on Sunday. But maybe you don't want to spend your time off on Sunday cooking for people who aren't even going to appreciate the food that you cook for them. And another thing is that you probably know what's going on here a little bit better and what kind of taste they have a little bit better than what they might expect. Because you mentioned that some food that you thought tasted actually really good and just fine was under seasoned for them. So you might just have incompatible cooking styles with what they have. If they feel like everything is bland and flavorless and needs more seasoning and salt, and you feel like, oh, the food that I'm eating here is perfectly fine, this could be a recipe for disaster for them because if you cook up something and you cook it the way you like and it's under seasoned to them, they're just going to be, you know, unhappy with the food. So really, the best course of action here is for them not to have you cook for them and just order out a pizza. Um, that's that's my advice in this situation. Yeah. So anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. Stand your ground. They sound awful. You are completely right. There's no point in making anything when you already know they'll criticize it. Part of me wonders if this is why the caterers canceled. She knows she'd get a bad review from them. This. They're going to complain about it, so why make it? If you took the money, they'd feel even more entitled to complain. Basically, they're going to complain if OP does it, and complain when OP doesn't. So why bother putting in the effort? That's actually a really good point. I'm also curious, if they had time to show up at OP's doorstep and argue about some pizzas, Why didn't they have the time to make it themselves? They could have probably just as quickly gone to the grocery store instead of OP's house to pick up the pre-sliced ingredients and pre-made dough and whip themselves up a homemade pizza just in the matter of minutes. So yeah, not the jerk. Alright folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.
My in-laws are big food people. That's a lot of food made out of people. Soylent Green. It's people. 